having recently taken a look at a quite frankly crap solar light, which had a small solar panel under a coloured dome and it flashed on and off and it was some sort of beacon indicator and it didn't look, well it didn't last that long on whatever charge it took. I found another post-top solar light on AliExpress and this one has a central round core with LED tape all the way around it, which is quite nice. And it's got a very big solar panel with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 sections of silicon, which kind of gives a voltage of about 5.5 volts. And that means it's almost certainly a lithium cell in here. And unfortunately... Uh, this one is defective out the box. To get access to it, you have to pull the bottom off. It's not over clear about that. And when you turn the switch on, it uh, it just it's not made a good connection. You can see the LED is trying to light, but even in the dark, when uh, you let go of that switch, it stops working. Okay, that's fine. That means we have to bypass the switch or just fix the problem. It's probably a duff switch. But anyway, we're here to open it up. If you're wondering why I've got a glove on my left hand, it's because I've taken an allergic reaction to something and it's all red and angry, so I'm protecting at the moment. Right. What's going to come off here? Oh, this is going to come off here. There's the slightly ungenerous uh, lithium cell. There's the solar panel. There is the plastic housing with the LED tape around it. Loads of potential there. And there, and this cell comes out, it's a double A sized lithium cell. Uh, the switch is on board, I wonder if it's a bad solar connection. We'll find out. Oh, there's not much on that circuit board at all. That's refreshing. So, uh, solar, that unplugs. Uh, and the LED unplugs. You could use any colour of LED tape you want in there. That's quite nice, and these will probably pop out with suitable grabbing with a big pair of pliers. Let me try that. Yep, they come out. Excellent. Right, so I'm ready just to whip the circuit board out and take a picture of it so we can explore the circuitry. One moment, please. And explore for such a simple circuit. How could somebody have screwed up so badly? Oh, it was me. I screwed up really badly because, you know how I said, uh, right, okay, that switch, when you wiggle it, it's making an intermittent connection, could be just a bad switch, which is common, or it could be a broken soda connection. So I just bridged these two out to do my tests, which is reason enough, bypassed the switch completely, no signs of broken tracks. And also because these are the narrow pitch connectors, like 2 millimeter instead of the sort of 0.1 inch, the 2.54 millimeter, I stole the connector off the LEDs to actually put in the solar connection uh, so that I could uh, feed it a supply and actually monitor the current that went to the lithium cell and also what it charged it up to. And nothing was testing out correctly. I spent so much time. I can't even start to explain. Just I just assumed that maybe the chip was faulty or something like that. But as I was uh, beginning to give up, because I was probing about onto these connections and saying, well, got continuity there, got continuity there. Then I noticed that when you wiggled the switch, even though it's bridged out, it still jiggled the connection on and off. And it turns out this connection here, let me just highlight it. This connection here had no solder on it. It was a dry joint. And uh, once I'd resolved that, everything worked fine. So now it's worked fine and everything has been more or less tested. I've not tested the capacity of the cell yet. I'll have to leave that on overnight now to do its slow discharge. But before I show you the schematic, let me show you the solar panel itself. It's one of these very clean laminated ones. Not sure how robust they are, but notable for the underside of the solar panel, having the white silicone uh, all around the area where the wires come through. So that is a pretty good seal, although if water does pool in that area, you're still going to have these outer connections exposed and they could be subject to corrosion. But the main thing is it's not going to drip down into the circuitry or go where these connections are close together. 
Um, now I've shown you that, I'll, I'll just give you a quick look at the LED tape. It's standard 3-volt LED tape, no resistors, very standard stuff. You could use this stuff with resistors if you wanted, but really it's just like parallel LED tape. Looks very good. Let me show you the schematic. So, let's say that this is 0 volts, and this is, well, as it happens, 2.7 to 4.18 volts, because I've tested that aspect. When it's charging the cell, it charges it up to 4.18 volts, and then it just cuts current to the lithium cell. It cuts off when it's running at night at 2.7 volts, which is reasonable enough. It's a bit above what the standard protection chip cuts off at. And it cuts back in again at 3.2 volts when the cells regain charge, which means that you're not going to get that flash on and off at night thing. So here's a lithium cell, and it has a switch in the positive connection. Um, we have a decoupling capacitor, which is 100 nanofarad, and then mystery chip, which I did not find, AAY. It's dedicated to this task. It is purely a solar control chip with lithium cells. Here's a solar panel, puts out about 5.5 volts and goes straight to the chip and gets diverted out to the lithium cell. Whatever current it's able to put out, it puts it out until it reaches in the event it does reach 4.18 volts, and then it will just basically open the circuit there. The LEDs are driven by an internal transistor, and you add a resistor of your choice, 30 ohms in this instance, which is good. It's not doing that sort of mega brightness, but really short runtime thing. 30 ohms is actually sensible. Uh, and then just a large parallel array of LEDs. How many LEDs? Let me just check that. Wow. 30 LEDs dead on and just absolutely perfect spacing. This strip must be kind of either a standard strip that they've uh, changed the size to fit it, or this is a custom strip just this light, which would make sense, to be honest. But there we have it. Um, the super simple, modern, lithium-powered uh, solar garden light. It looks pretty good. Uh, I shall put the... Lithium cell on test overnight. I'll do test at a low current. It says date 2025-2, so February of 2025. Size 14500 and uh, 500 milliamp hour. Well, we shall see. I shall test it, and then I'll put the results of that down in the description. But that is it. Uh, you know what? Aside from that one dry solder joint... Uh, it actually comes across as a really nice light. So I shall put a link to that in the description down below.